Peace and blessings, everyone. The Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Nazareth, that sitteth on the right hand of the Heavenly Father, be praised. We'll do the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our sins as we forgive those that sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. All praises to the Most High in Christ. Amen. Peace and blessings, everyone. We're going to read from the book of eight, uh, the book of Acts, chapter eight, and we'll read from the fifth verse. Acts chapter eight and verse five, and the scripture reads: Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. So now we're reading about the ministry of a brother by the name of Philip. And this was during the time that there was a great persecution against the church at Jerusalem and the church was scattered. So that opened up the door for the word of the Lord to be preached in the cities of Samaria where there was a, a large population of the children of Israel that dwelt in Samaria. So the spirit led the brother Philip into the city of Samaria and he was preaching Christ unto them. And he was preaching that Jesus of Nazareth is the Christ, the Lord of Israel, the Messiah of Israel, the Most High's anointed one. Out of the law of Moses, the books of the prophets, the Psalms of David. That's how Philip unto the Israelites that dwell in Samaria preached Christ unto them. He, he preached him out of the scriptures. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake. So when the people of Samaria were hearing Philip preach Christ unto them, they were all, you know, coming in one accord to, to really take heed, pay close attention to the words that Philip was preaching unto them when he, when he preached Christ unto them. Then it says, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did see so they hearing the words that the lord put in his heart to speak unto the children of israel going into the law of moses the books of the prophets and the psalms of david and going on to how going into how jesus of nazareth fulfilled those scriptures that spoke of the the, the messiah of israel to come and the words that he spake came with signs, just like when the other apostles of the Lord, when they preached, signs followed them. And tell us that in the book of Mark, chapter 16, how the Lord was with them. So let me just get that point real quick. Mark 16, right? This is Mark, chapter 16. It says, so then after the Lord had spoken unto them. So this is going into how after the Lord had spoken unto his disciples. He, meaning the Lord Jesus of Nazareth, was received up into where? Heaven. So we all know according to the scriptures, Isaiah 66, the scripture going to prove it, that the most highest throne is where in heaven meaning the heaven of heavens so after the lord was risen from the dead he was with his disciples for 40 days speaking to them of the things pertaining to the kingdom of god for them to teach once he would ascend to the father in heaven see to sit on the right hand of the father so it says that's what it's going to say so it says and sat on the right hand of God. So our Lord Jesus of Nazareth ascended to sit on the right hand of the Heavenly Father in the heaven of heavens. And by him sitting on the right hand of the Most High God, he was given all power and authority to rule in heaven and in earth. So we can understand the Lord is running everything in heaven and earth by the power and authority that the Most High gave him. The, the world is being ran by the word of his power. 
Okay, so he's sitting on the right hand of God, meaning all power and authority has been given unto our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the name that was given among all other names, meaning the power and authority that the Lord was given of the Father. No man ever received that power and authority. And he functions as our high priest as well, sitting on the right hand of the Father. So then it says, and they went forth and preached everywhere. So that wasn't until they tarried in Jerusalem and they were endued with power from on high. Then they went forth and preached everywhere, beginning at Jerusalem, Judea, and then as we're reading in Acts chapter 8, Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. So our Lord preached. I mean, the apostles, um, the, uh, the apostles preached the word of the Lord everywhere. The Lord, here's the key, Israel. Let's go with John 14 and 12. Working with them. You checking that out, brothers and sisters? Who is this Lord that was working with the apostles that he sent forth, including the brother Philip in Acts chapter 8 when he preached in Samaria. Who was working with Philip in Samaria? This The Lord. Who is this Lord? The one that was received up into heaven. And sat on the right hand of God. That's Jesus of Nazareth that was born in Bethlehem of Judah, whose days are from old and from everlasting. The son of God. So then it tells us, and they went forth. Once the Lord ascended to the, to, uh, to the right hand of the father in the heaven of heavens, he returned on to them in the form of the comforter. Because the Lord said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come on to you. So that proves that Christ is the comforter. So then it says, and they went forth. So once they were endued with power from on high at Jerusalem during the Feast of First Fruits, this was about two months after our Lord was crucified and killed during the preparation of the Passover. Two months later, that's when the beginning of what was written here began to come to pass. The Lord sitting on the right hand of God. So this Lord is Jesus working with them. So when we were reading here in John 8, right? Get back to that point. Not John, um, Acts 8 and 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake hearing and seeing the what miracles philip was doing miracles the miracles which he did so did philip speak and do the miracles that he did separate and it's uh separate and aside from christ or through christ the works that philip did up here in samaria Preaching Christ out of the scriptures and the miracles that he did. Did he do them through Christ? Separate from Christ? Aside from which one? Well, let's go back to this point. And they went forth, you know, beginning with the 12 disciples. When, when he sent them forth. In Acts 2, the Spirit of the Lord came upon them and they preached Christ. So by the time we get to Acts 8, the church has already really, really, really grown, especially at Jerusalem. So there was a great persecution against the church at Jerusalem. And Saul was one of the main men that was behind this assault upon the church at Jerusalem. So it, it got so... Um, so bad for the church that it caused 
he caused a lot of havoc. And but the Lord had that go down for that to be a way for the word to be preached. Okay, that's that's what that's that was what was going on in Acts chapter eight. So go um I want to read this verse again, Mark sixteen twenty, and they went forth. And which would include also later on in, in the ministry, Philip going into where? Samaria and preached everywhere. The Lord. Remember it said that Philip preached Christ unto them? Who was with him? The Lord working with them. Who is this Lord? The same Lord that David the son of Jesse, David, king of Israel, called the Messiah, the Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, the Lord, meaning Jesus of Nazareth, working with them. So that was the Lord working with Philip for the word and miracles to be done that the, the people of that certain city of Samaria witnessed. That's why. Jesus is who he is. He is truly the Lord and the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God of Israel. He's the, he's the most high's anointed one. Now check this out. And confirming the word with signs following. Amen. So the preaching of Christ was accompanied with what? Signs following, miracles that follow. So this goes with John 14 and 12 when the Lord said, He that believeth on me. He that believeth on me. The works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Right? That's that's what it tells. I'll, I'll read that. I'll read that verse, Israel. But let's go to John 14. And it will go back to Acts 8. Let's read John chapter 14 and 12 here. Because it was going down in Acts 8. I mean, before Acts 8, Acts 2 is where, you know, what the Lord said here began. Let's read it. John 14 and 12. Verily, verily, I say unto thee. Un, 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 <coughs> excuse me. Verily, verily, I say unto you. So when the Lord was speaking these words, he was speaking first and foremost to his disciples. He that believeth on me. So he that believeth that Jesus of Nazareth is the Lord and Christ of Israel, the Savior of Israel. The works that I do shall he do also. Wow. I mean, that's powerful words right there. That's why he had to say it the way he said it. Verily, verily, truly, truly. Because this is a very powerful words that the Lord is saying to teaching his disciples, showing unto his disciples. He's teaching them that the work that I'm doing, you're going to do also. <laughs> so this is John, the 14th chapter. When you go to John, the 11th chapter, we read about our Lord raising Lazarus from the dead after he was dead four days. The Lord raised them up. So those were the kind of works amongst um, that the, uh, the apostles would do amongst, you know, um, uh, you know, as well as other works, preaching the word, you know, healing brothers and sisters from diverse sicknesses and diseases. And these men, you know, were doing the same works that our Lord was doing during his ministry. Why? How? Through their faith in Jesus of Nazareth. Then he says, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So these greater works that the disciples of the Lord would do were 
done through Christ. That's what we should be getting from that. How, how we know that? Because he said, because I go on to my father. That's what we read in Mark 16. How after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, the most high stone, and he sat on the right hand of God. So by the Lord ascending to sit on the right hand of the heavenly father in the heaven of heavens, he would be with those that believed upon him so that they, through faith in Jesus, would be able to do the works that the Lord did in greater works. Not separate, not aside from Christ, but just like we read here in Mark 16. Well, like we read in Mark 16, the Lord was working with them, the Lord working with them. That's what's happening here, Israel. So let's go back to that. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. So remember, reference Mark 16, 19 and 20, as well as John 14, verse 12. That's how Philip and the rest of the men that he sent forth to preach this word were able to do the works that he was doing and greater works. Then it says, for unclean spirits crying out with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. Did not the Lord do these miracles when we read in throughout the book of Matthew and Mark and um, the book of John and, and the book of Luke? And many taken with palsies, just like throughout the Gospels. And they that were lame, just like throughout the Gospels, were healed. That sounds like Christ is in the midst of this, right? Well, of course he is. The Lord is working these works through Philip. Philip is a vessel. He preached Christ unto them because the Lord gave him the power and authority to preach. That's how he was able to take... Uh, the, those unclean spirits that was in the people that were that possessed them and and people that had these different f infirmities and sicknesses and ailments these sicknesses departed from them and there was great joy in that city so in that particular city of samaria there was great joy that the word being followed with miracles and signs was there present among them so they get they were given you know all praises to the most high christ and they were rejoicing greatly, right? So let's read verse 9 now. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery. Hmm. And bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. So, by Simon using sorcery and casting spells on the people, he bewitched them. That means that he was used, you know, he was dealing with the use of, of spells, and like I say in Deuteronomy 18 divination so this brother had um a way to manipulate manipulate and control people and put them under a spell where they were in awe where they were in great reverence of this work that he was doing not in the name of the most high in christ but you know in allegiance to to satan Okay, because when you when we when man is dealing with sorcery and bewitching people, that man is dealing straight up with Satan. So then it says in verse um, ten, right? It says, "To whom they all gave heed." See, so all the people in this city, he he had them all bewitched where. You know, whenever this guy was practicing his sorcery and witchcraft and bewitching people, it's like he had them under a spell where, you know, they, they were all under 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 the spell of his control in witchcraft. From the least to the greatest, saying, this man 
is the great power of God. See, so they were deceived and bewitched into thinking that the sorcery that he was using was like some type of power that like the, the, the creator gave him, the most high gave him. And to him they had regard. So they had great regard for this man. Because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorcery, see. That's why I like when we read in Galatians, the third chapter, remember when Paul said, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? So who, who you know, who are the ones that were being bewitched? The Israelites that dwell in Galatia that were at one time following Christ according to the scriptures, but then they were being controlled and manipulated and bewitched under the spell. They were under the spell of witchcraft into following the doctrine of, of the of the Pharisees. See, the chief priests, elders, and scribes of Israel to believing that, that we're saved by following the old covenant. When we're saved by Christ, because the old covenant and the prophets that were, that spoke under the old covenant, they spoke concerning Jesus of Nazareth being our righteousness. Like I tell us in Jeremiah 23, for example. Okay, so now. And that's why Paul was getting on the Israelites in Galatia, because it shows you that when 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 man is using sorceries to control and manipulate people, that now they think like he he's some great man of God, and then they're under the spell of the one that's using these spells on them. They're under the control. Of this man. That's why Paul was like, he, the spirit, you know, of the Lord was upon him to really truly address what was going on there amongst the Israelites in Galatia. And he called it right. He called it witchcraft. He called it sorcery. And he said that they were under, under the spell and delusion that, that the, the men that, that taught this, you know, that they, they were doing, he, they, that they were practicing witchcraft on them to not follow Christ no more. So it says, and to him they had regard because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. So there's sorceries where people are dealing straight up in Satan or they still dealing straight up with Satan, but they're using the scriptures to control and manipulate and, um, how you say, uh, bewitch people. Because there is, there is a sense, uh, there is a, a, a practice of witchcraft when scriptures are being taught and quoted, but like Satan tried to do for, this is, you know, the point that Acts, like not at all, Matthew chapter four, we read about how Satan quoted Psalm 91, right? Took it out of context. So when someone takes scriptures out of the context of what it's truly saying, where would they learn that from? The father of taking scriptures in the word of God out of context, the devil. So those Israelites in Galatia are no different than this guy, Simon. They're both practicing witchcraft. This guy was just more straight up dealing in that witchcraft of, of the, the spells and, and divination and things like that, where you had the, the certain men of Israel of the, that was under the persuasion of the chief priests, elders, and scribes of Israel, the Pharisee types. They would come with the law of Moses and the books of the prophets, but they still... Doing what this guy did, bewitching them with their sorceries and, and have them believe that, you know, that, that these these men were the great teachers and power of God. <laughs> so it's saying verse 12, but when they believed Philip, see, the people that were under the spell of this guy, Simon, when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God. So the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Remember in Acts chapter 1, that after the Lord was risen from the dead, before he ascended to the Father to sit on the right hand of God, it says that he spake, he spake to them of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and how to obtain it. So the things pertaining to the kingdom of God is, is Christ. That's how we obtain the kingdom of the Most High. So it says, but when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. So when Philip went to Samaria to manifest the name of Jesus Christ, 
that's not, you know, like a lot of Israelites take when it speaks about the name of Jesus Christ. A lot of Israelites, they under the spell of witchcraft and they're thinking that that that's going into the pronunciation of the Messiah's name. Philip did not go into Samaria to declare the name of the Lord's name according to the, the you know the, the ancient Hebrew, the real Hebrew. No, him declaring the name of Jesus Christ, it told us already what that means. It told us in the chapter. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake. Hearing, meaning the words he spoke, and seeing the what? Miracles which he did. For the unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many that were, and many taken with palsies, and they, and that were lame, were healed. Right? That's what this means when it says, in the name of Jesus Christ. They were eyewitnesses to the power and authority that was given to Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ was there working through Philip so that he was able to perform these great words, speak these great words and perform these great works. Then it says, they were baptized, both men and women. So these Israelites that Philip preached Christ unto, and revealing the name of Jesus Christ, meaning the power that was given unto our Lord. So that means he had to go into how our Lord was crucified, killed, buried, and risen from the dead. And declared the son of the living God by the, by, 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 by the resurrection. So that he may enter into his glory. To sit on the right hand of the Father. So that the world would be ran by the word of his power. See, the same power that he had with God before the world was, the Lord had it. He had it back. That's what he prayed for in John 17. So these Israelites that believed in Christ, they were all what? Baptized. So this baptism is talking about water baptism. Okay, Because they already believed in Christ. So their faith in Christ led them to be what? Baptized in water. Men and women were baptized in water. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip. Okay, so now. Now this guy Simon here that practiced sorcery and bewitched the people with his witchcraft, he got baptized in water. He continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs that we read in Mark 16, 20, which were done. So this man, Simon, that was baptized by Philip. He's now he's following the brother Philip as the Lord is working these great works through Philip. This brother is he's he's in great awe of what the Lord is is doing through this brother Simon, beholding the miracles and the signs that that were done among the people of Israel. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God. See, so remember, it uh, said that they preached Christ, that Philip preached Christ unto them. So what does that mean? The word of God. So who is the word of God? <laughs> Tell us in Revelation 19, I don't know if it's 11 verse 12, Jesus Christ. So in, in, earlier in the verses, it said that he preached Christ unto them. Here is saying the word of God. The word of God is Jesus Christ being preached unto Israel out of the law of Moses, the books of the prophets, and the Psalms of David. If you're about the word of God, you're about Jesus Christ. If you reject Jesus Christ, then we're not truly about the word of God. Okay? There's the Pharisee scribes, they and the, the chief priests, elders, the scribes, right? Even the Sadducees, they were, 
appeared outwardly like they were about the word of God and, and they, they actually taught at the temple of Jerusalem and in the synagogues all throughout Israel. But the ones of them that rejected Christ, they were not truly about the word of God. Because like the Lord said in John 5, if, if you truly about Moses, then you would believe in me because he spake of me. So it says they sent unto them Peter and John. So once the church that remained in Jerusalem heard that the word of God was being preached at Samaria by Philip, the church sent Peter and John. Now, Peter and John, these... <laughs> These these were chosen men as well, just like the brother um, Philip. So this is Peter, the son of um, Jonah, right? And John, the brother of James, the son of Zebedee. These were two men that the Lord, when we read in Matthew 4, called into his discipleship and, and, and it taught them that I'm, I'm going to make you fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men. So the Lord did make fishers out of Peter and John, but fishers of men who, when they were come down, prayed for them. See, so Peter and John prayed for the Samaritans that they might receive the Holy Ghost. So Peter and John prayed for the Samaritans that heard the word being preached unto them and, and, and were baptized. Why, why were those two brothers praying over them? That they might receive the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Okay. So the Holy, the Holy Spirit is, it tells us, I mean, there's one scripture that really just pinpoints what the Holy Spirit is. I'll just read it real quick. Let's go back to that same book of John 14. Sometimes it is to get one, you know, I wouldn't say it's the best. I, the most I know is what's best. But this is one of the, one of the, this is like a top notch scripture. Let's put it like that. So this is John 14. And verse 23. I'll be from this verse. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot. Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Because he spoke about himself being the comforter in John eighteen, uh, John 14, 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Okay, so Judas is trying to figure out, okay, Lord, how is it that you're going to manifest yourself as the comforter to us, but you're not going to re reveal yourself as the, as the comforter unto the whole world? Jesus answered and said unto him. So the the comforter is the Holy Spirit. I'm going to get that point. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. <laughs> okay, right? Okay. Judas saith unto him, Not a scary Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, so remember, the question was, how are you going to manifest yourself as the comforter? So Judas knew that the Lord is the comforter, but how if you're going to not be physically with us? Jesus answered and said unto him, Judas, if a man love me, meaning if a man truly loves me, he, the man that truly loves him, will keep my words. Keep my words. Guard my words with his life. We got to keep the words of Christ, Israel, if we truly love him. We have to guard his word. It has to be in our heart. And we cannot let Satan snatch it out of our heart. So we can't give place to the devil to, to snatch away that which the Lord has sown in our heart. The words of eternal life. Then it says, and my father will love him. So if we love Christ and we keep the words of Christ, the father will love him. Why? Because like John, like the Lord said in John 7, 16, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. 
And now check this out. And we. Who? So who's the we? The Father and Jesus. The same as is described in Genesis 126. And let us make man in our image. Who is the us? In Genesis 126. The Father speaking unto Jesus. Our Lord. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Well guess what? Through the outpouring of the comforter. The Holy Spirit. The spirit of truth. We're going to be made a new creature. Because unless a man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of God. That's why we need the comforter. Because if there's no comforter, we have no life. If there's no comforter, we cannot become a new creature. If a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him. And we will come unto him. Manifest thyself. We, the Father and Jesus, will come unto him and make our abode with him. So where is the Most High dwell? If heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool, what can't we going to say is the, the home of truth? <laughs> What city, what mountain are we going to claim and say, that's where the Lord dwells? What building are we going to say that that's where the Lord dwells? What temple are we going to say that's where the Lord dwells? Seeing that the Most High created all things. We have to worship the creature. Not, no, we, we have to worship the creator. More than his creation. and Or take his creation and say, okay, this is where the most high dwell. Like we're going to put it like in like some type of man-made box. No. The most high said in Isaiah, right? Let's get this point. Isaiah 66. Since we quoted it, let's just read it. Isaiah 66 and 1. Thus saith the Lord. Okay, so this is talking about thus saith the Most High. The God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. The heaven is my throne. So where is the most highest throne? The heaven. What heaven? The visible heavens? No. The heaven of heavens. And the earth is my footstool. Heaven is the most highest throne. The earth is his footstool. Where? Is the house that ye build unto me. So when Isaiah spoke these words. Of the Most High. Israel had a temple in Jerusalem. <laughs> so. That's why the Lord said in Matthew. One greater than the temple is here among you. He's talking about him. He was talking about himself. He's greater than the temple. Because the way of worshiping the Father. Is through the Son. And where is the place of my rest. Where, what location is the place of the rest of the Most High? Where does the Most High Spirit dwell? Where does the Most High rest? For all those things hath mine hand made. So whatever man takes and builds and says that's where the Most High dwells. Remember, the Most High through Christ created all these things. And all those things have been, meaning since the creation, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look. See, that's what the Lord was trying to teach his disciples in John 14. 
even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit. Because when Christ said, he, you know, he that believeth on, on me, like I said in um, John 14, remember it said, um, let me make sure I'm saying it right. Um, John 14. Go back to that point real quick. This one here, John 14, 3, 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Now, let's focus on this. If a man love me, he will keep my words. According to the words of Christ, what did he teach us? What did he teach us? If he came to fulfill that which was written of him. Well, he came to teach us to be poor, blessed are the poor, meaning in spirit. Even in him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, remorseful for sin. That's what our Lord, the Son of God, taught us to be. Poor in spirit. Humble. Of a contrite spirit. Remorseful for sin. Humble. Teachable, become his children, void of malice, and trembleth at my word. That's what Christ taught us concerning the Most High. He taught us many things pertaining to the Most High, but the things that stand out is that that humility. The remorsefulness that we're to have for sin and fear and trembling at the word of the Most High. That's who the Most High dwells with. He does not dwell in temples made with hands. That you can go to Acts 7, where the brother Stephen, he referenced this scripture here. As well as Moses, I believe, in um, the book of Acts as well. So, uh, uh, not Moses, uh, Peter, when he was, uh, no, Acts, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 7, that was Stephen speaking, and he spoke about Moses in the wilderness with Israel, and he brought out, uh, Stephen, that is, he brought out the scripture about um, how the Most High don't dwell in the temples made with hands. So now, let's go back to... Finish up this verse here, John 14. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, meaning he's going to guard my words with his life. He's going to take heed to how the Lord taught that we're to be of a poor and a contrite spirit, remorseful for sin, humble, teachable, you know, how we're, to, we're supposed to tremble at the word of the Father. And my Father will love him. And we will come unto him in the form of the comforter and make our abode with him. Our abode with him in the form of the comforter, which the comforter is the Holy Spirit. Whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. So Christ is speaking about the comforter, the spirit of truth, like in third person. He, but when we understand the context of where he's coming from, the he that's teaching us all things is Christ by the power and authority of the Father. That's why I said, and bring all things to your... Remember, he's speaking to his disciples here. Remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So when they would actually go forth and preach Christ, 
the remembrance of the things that Christ taught them would be given to them for them to preach. Now, let's go back to Acts 8. Now when the apostles which were in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they, meaning Peter and John, were come down, prayed for them, meaning the Israelites of Samaria that uh, Philip preached unto, that they might receive the Holy Ghost or the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the comfort of the spirit of truth. Now check this out, Israel. This is an awesome scripture. We're at Acts um, chapter 8 and verse 16. For as yet, meaning not yet, he was fallen upon none of them. So who is the he that was not yet fallen upon the Israelites in Samaria? Who is the he there? What? Well, we're going to keep reading. Only they, meaning the Israelites of Samaria, that got baptized by Philip and had the word preached unto them. And miracles were done through him by Christ. Were baptized, meaning in water, in the name of the Lord Jesus. So when Philip baptized those Israelites of Samaria in water, under whose power and authority? Were they baptized under the power and authority of, of, of Christ? But what was unique in this circumstance here was that he was not yet fallen upon none of them. Meaning they didn't receive the Holy Spirit yet. But it's referencing the Holy Spirit as, as who? <laughs> that Now we see why Christ said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come unto you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come on to you. And then when we read in verse 23, let's bring it home. It's the spirit of the Most High in Christ, the presence of the Most High in Christ in the form of the comfort of the Holy Spirit because it's through the, it's the Holy Spirit. The, by the spirit of the Most High in Christ upon us, that means the word is being sown in his heart. The spirit of the Most High is of, of, and Christ, the word. Is being sown in our hearts to become a new creature. For as yet he was not fallen upon none of them. Who is the he? Christ. Only they were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So they were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, but for whatever reason, they didn't receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So it took the church to send the brother Peter and John to pray over them. And then it says, then laid they hand, then laid they their hands on them. So that's going into like praying over them, anointing them, right? And they received the Holy Ghost. So, so we know in, uh, what we read in John 14, 26, the Holy Spirit is the what? The comforter. So whether we say Holy Spirit comforter or in, in, in another verse in that John 14 we didn't read it, it called it the spirit of truth who is it talking about? Jesus come on Israel we can't gainsay that so now like all these doctrines in Israel amongst our people where you get Muhammad I have no idea where we get this guy is the comforter that's not the scriptures. You got some of this what I was talking about. The Holy Spirit is a feminine spirit. That's Queen of Heaven doctrine being disguised as the truth. So you got Israelites actually teaching that the Holy Spirit is a feminine spirit. Well, why would you teach such a doctrine? Well, want, want to, to, 
to practice scripture sorcery. Take scriptures out of context to bewitch brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, to manipulate and control them. And that's what you got in a lot of these Israelite doctrines. Manipulation. These Israelites are practicing witchcraft on you, Israel. Sorcery. Sorcery of scriptures. These scriptures we read were plain. You can't get no other doctrine. The spirit of truth is in our camp. That's just as wicked as teaching that the Holy Spirit is a feminine spirit. Or the comfort is talking about Muhammad. Like you got our brothers lost in the Islam. And 5% and all these crazy doctrines where they take scriptures out of context. To what? Control and manipulate you just like this man Simon. For as yet he, meaning Jesus, was... For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. So they didn't receive the spirit, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Although they were baptized in water. Then John and James laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, not a feminine spirit. Not the, not, not the idolatrous worship of corrupt men spirit in these Israelite camps that claim they're the home of truth. Whether they're saying it directly or indirectly. Because it ain't just one camp. Was given. He offered them money. So what is that showing you? This man is not spiritual. And this man has not put off the old man. Because when he was practicing the witchcraft on the people, what's he getting out of it? Money. So now he see the Holy Spirit at work where people are receiving the Holy Spirit. And they had the gift of to speak the, you know, because there's different gifts according to the Spirit. So whatever gifts that were given among them this brother, Simon, is, is seeing these things. And what's he saying? What's he seeing when he sees this? Cha-ching, cha-ching. He's seeing what? Shoot, if I could buy this with money, then I can use this same power of the Holy Spirit. And what? Do what he's doing in the spirit of Peter and John? No. No. That's why it's showing us, Israel, that when... And when we get baptized, we have to truly put off the old man. Or else we're going to do the same sins that we did when we were in the world without Christ. And do these works with a Hebrew name. Not that this brother changed his name. That, that's not good. I'm talking about, you know, now how Israel... We think because we, we got a Hebrew name, we got armbands and fringes with blue border and we got, you know, Hebrew name and we in some camp and we teaching the word of God like that. We born again. Nah. We have to change this real. What do we read? How we have to be poor and contrite spirit, man. We supposed to be humble, man. We supposed to be about repenting. That's what I say. Contrite of spirit. What are we supposed to be contrite, concerning, remorseful of? Sin. So let's read on here. Saying, give me also this power that on whomsoever I, see, he, he, he ain't put off the old man. I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. So this man, he wants that power that Peter and John have that he think he can buy with money. Because what was he doing? With the people that he bewitched. They thought that he was some great power. Why? Because he's about controlling and manipulating people. Getting money for them to do this sorcery. So now he want to use the power of the Holy Spirit that's manifest among Peter and, and John. He wants it now. He thinks he could buy it with money so that he can use that Holy Spirit upon um, 
whoever he laid his hands upon, that they may receive the Holy Spirit. But his heart is not right, Israel. And it's going to explain. It's going to explain. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee. Ooh, that's cold, brother. Thy money perish with thee. You and your money perish. Because thou hast thought out of a wicked heart. The gift of God, which is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And all the gifts that's tied to it may be purchased with money. You and your money perish because you have thought that you can purchase the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not something that you can buy. It's not something that, that you gain through buying. It's a gift that comes from being of a poor and contrite spirit. That's and, and one that trembles at the word of God. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. See, how Peter know to say these words like this? Because the Lord told him in Matthew 16 how the Spirit will work through these men. As if Christ was there. See, this discernment on the part of Peter is not of his own perspective. It's the perspective of what the spirit of the most high in Christ is revealing and speaking through him, through his discernment, discernment, discernment on his part, look, looking at this guy, um, this man, um, Simon. So what is Peter saying? You have no part, no share. Why? Obviously, the man is what? Covetous. He's covetous. So that means he's an idolater because covetousness is idolatry. And the God and idol he's worshiping is who? Himself. Because he wants it not for the right reasons. That's what the Spirit is revealing through the brother Peter. So that shows us, Israel, that if we don't truly change from the sins that we're supposed to be confessing, you know, when we're repenting in Christ and being baptized in water under that power and authority of Christ, you know, if we, if we don't change, you know, that's, that's a dangerous place to be. That's a dangerous place to be, Israel. So now it says, Repent, therefore, of this thy what? Wickedness. See? So that's what he meant by, you ain't right in the sight of the Most High. And pray God, meaning pray to God, if... If, perhaps, God willing, the thought of thine heart. See? Then Christ said, out of the heart. From out of the heart, from within, comes what? Evil. Evil. Perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. What was the thought of his heart? The words that he spake came from his heart. The old self, not the new creature in Christ. There's a scripture where the Lord speaks about, out of, uh, you know, from, you know, um, out of the abundance of of uh, of our heart, uh, you know, the words that come out. I forget how I say it exactly. I'm sorry for chopping it up. Um, I'll post it in the um, in the comment section. I, I don't want to, you know, not say it right. But more or less, the Lord is saying what, what comes out of man's heart 
and the things that he, what man speaks in, in his behavior, it's it comes from the heart, whether good or evil. So what's come? What was the thought that 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 proceeded out of a, of a corrupt heart? That he thought that the Holy Spirit could be bought with money, and and on top of that, for covetous practices, he wanted to use it in a way where it was not going to glorify the Most High in Christ. Because when Peter and John were doing these works, they already set the example. For example, in John 3, I mean, Acts 3, when they were performing these works, the works of, of the Most High in Christ among Israel, they never did it to seek some type of vain glory, to make it about themselves. That's why Peter and John said, look, why you look upon us as through our own holiness of power, we made this man whole. See? Now imagine a man like um, um, Simon here receiving that power like Peter and John had. What's he going to do with that power? He's going to corrupt himself. And do witchcraft and sorcery and bewitch the people. So that's why Peter said, look, you have no share in this. This lot here, the ministry of the Lord, you don't have no part. Of it. You have, there's no share in it for you. Not in that state. You need to repent to the most high. That perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. That's cold, Israel. And he ain't done yet. Check this out. For I perceive, meaning I discern, I judge, that thou art in the gall of what? Bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. That's cold. The gall of bitterness, meaning the poison of bitterness. And in the bond or the control of, what does it say here? Iniquity. Unrighteousness. His spirit was off. This brother is in the bond of iniquity. The control of who? Satan. Because when he was bewitching the people and controlling and manipulating them into thinking that he was some power of God, he was in, he was in the bondage of, of the devil when he was doing it. Satan was using him to use the people. So Satan had Simon in bond of iniquity and the people that was under his spell in the bond of iniquity. But they were released from that bond of iniquity. They believed in Christ. Simon's was only what? Surface level. But it wasn't what? From the heart. And that's the difference, Israel. That's what worshiping God in spirit and truth is all about, Israel. We have to truly, we have to be sincere. This brother wasn't sincere. You in the bond of iniquity. You would control you you under the you're under the control of iniquity and unrighteousness. So that's a cold scripture. I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness. Remember, he saw Philip. Right? And he wondered, right? He didn't check himself. So now when he see Peter and John, what type, what type of spirit is this gall of bitterness going into? The man was full of jealousy and held captive by sin. Said there was an element of what within him? Covetousness. And Colossians 3 and 5 said covetousness is idolatry. So let's understand what's happening here, Israel. The Holy Spirit is revealing that he was jealous and bound and bound by his evil, his old evil ways that he never truly put off. And that's, you know, something that we should look at 
and tremble to know that if we don't put off the spirit of covetousness, you know, the, the spirit of the idolatry of self, you know, making the truth about us. See, let's understand one thing, Israel. Like Peter said very beautifully and, and clearly in First Peter 5, Israel is the most highest people. Christ said, feed my sheep. The sheep is not Peter's or John's or any man's on earth. They're the Lord's sheep. Once we start behaving like these people, this congregation, this church, this camp is mine and we acting and behaving in a way like where is ours? With, with, with the Lord, we, we coming in some other way among the sheepfold in the context of, like I say in John, a thief and a robber, not the true shepherd. So no, no, Peter's right. He has no share in this matter. You, 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 the scriptures tell us that he that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of the Lord. Exodus 18 said, not covetous. So no true man of God that has been given the, 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 the ability and the word of God, he will, he's never going to make this truth about him. Even though they say, oh, in the name of the most high in Christ and whatever Hebrew name they come up with and oh, don't let all that fool you. Christ said, you shall know them by their fruits. Peter said, neither being lords over God's heritage. But what he did say, feed the flock of God, like it's saying Jeremiah 3.15. Feed the flock of God which is among you. See? So yes, they were shepherds over the Lord's sheep. Not their sheep, their camp, my congregation. No, once we start doing that, we're now observing power and uh, usurping power and authority over Christ that was never given to us. We're going to destroy ourselves and the whole congregation. Because the Lord said, the blind, lead the blind, both of them shall fall into a ditch. Let's wrap it up, Israel. Then answered Simon and said, pray to the Most High, pray to the Lord, pray to the Lord. Pray to our Lord for me that none of these things which you have spoken come upon me. And what would that be? What were the things? Thy money perish with thee because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. See, so he's praying that he don't perish. So pray for me. All right, Israel. All praise to the Most High in Christ for these scriptures. That's a you know humbling lesson if we really look at it in the context of man. You know, I got to make sure that I'm working on my old self and putting him off truly, because in a lot of these doctrines in Israel, these false shepherds and teachers of Israel. The doctrines that they're going to teach you are going to cater to your lusts to conform to this world. And in this conforming to the world, it's being disguised as righteousness. It's being disguised as, as the truth. Just like Israel deceived himself in Exodus 32. Let us... They call the worship of the calf and the idolatry that was tied to it, the fornication tied to it, as a feast unto the Lord. That was not a feast unto the Lord. So when we start mixing traditions of men with the Lord's Passover, we in the danger of Exodus 32. Because now we're bringing in idolatry, the doctrines of men. Once we bring in the doctrines of men into the worship of the Most High, why are we doing that? Because we're an evil and adulterous generation. We lack faith. We don't truly believe in the Most High. And we want to 
fulfill our lust to be worldly. James 4 and 4, 1 John 2, 15 and 16, Mark 8, 38. For example, so we want to be about the true worship of the Most High. That's what Christ was about teaching. And to worship the Most High because he's a spirit, we have to be worshiping him in spirit. That's the new creature in Christ. And in truth, Christ is the truth. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. The flesh gives birth to the flesh. The flesh profits nothing. The works of the flesh are manifest. Those that do such things and not repent, they shall not enter into the kingdom of God. But that which is born of the spirit, that's what the Lord was teaching Nicodemus and all Israel, is spirit. See, is the flesh and the spirit. The old man, that's the flesh. The new man is what? The new creature in Christ. Born of the spirit. What is that spirit? When the Lord taught Nicodemus. We read it. The father in Christ abiding among us. Within us and among us as a people. The word. The scriptures. That's what's going to change us Israel. All right, Israel, we'll end it there. So all praise to the Most High in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Nazareth, we'll end it with a prayer. So we, we have to work on putting off the covetousness, the idolatry, that spirit of conforming to the world, um, being deceitful, fornication, pride, leaning upon our own understanding, bearing false witness, slander, breaking the Sabbath, Cutting corners when it comes to the scriptures. From the least to the greatest. All right, Israel. So let's do a prayer. Psalm 119. We have to, we have to put that off. Not mix that in our worship of the Most High. Because that's how we end up. Like the ones that the Lord had to deliver. When the Lord had to raise up judges onto Israel. Because once that generation that, that was there with Joshua, they passed away. The ones that came in their stead, they was being very worldly. And that caused the youth to be worldly. And every man was doing what was right in his own eyes, just like that. Even though Joshua said what he said in the 24th chapter. And they said that we we gonna do what you say, Joshua. <laughs> Joshua, all right, <laughs> all right. You you can't serve the Lord. He's a jealous God. He will not. <laughs> he will not tolerate you turning from him and you thinking that you are gonna get away. All right, Israel. So let's 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 read this song here. Psalm 114 and 1. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob, from a people of a strange land, which Judah was his sanctuary and Israel his dominion. See? So what's that showing you? The Most High, he dwelt among Israel, Judah and Israel. That's who the new covenant is for, the one that was under the old covenant. So that go what we just read in Isaiah 66. When Judah and Israel was right, the sea sawed and fled. Jordan was driven back. See, these are the works that the Lord did amongst Israel coming out of Egypt. And who was the most high dwelling in? Amongst Israel. Amongst our people. The Red Sea saw it and fled. <laughs> Jordan was driven back. The mountains skipped like rams and little hills like lambs. What ail thee, O thou sea, that thou fleddest, thou Jordan, that thou was driven back? Yeah, mountains, that ye skipped like rams, and ye little hills like lambs. Tremble, thou earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Egypt, which turned the rock into a standing water. 
The flint, meaning one of the hardest, most impenetrable rocks, into a fountain of what? Waters. And they tell us in 1 Corinthians 10 that that rock which followed us was who? Jesus Christ. All praises to the most high in Christ Israel. Christ is our rock. So that water, that was the Lord there among us. That's the point. He was the one that fed us the bread from heaven and the water from a rock. That was, that's why it's his days are from old and from everlasting. Throughout the history of Israel, the Lord was with God. That's why we're to repent and to be baptized in his name. And that ain't talking about the pronunciation of the Lord's name in Hebrew like a lot of Israelites falsely teach. His name meaning under his power, under his authority, and under his influence. That's how Peter was able, uh, uh, Philip in Acts 8 was able to do the works that he did. It spoke about him revealing the name, see, of Jesus Christ. Meaning that power that was manifest among them, that was the Lord of heaven and earth that was risen from the dead to ascend to the Father that gave him that power. All praise to the Most High Christ. All right, Israel, peace and blessings to your homes. Stay strong. Keep enduring. Have a blessed rest of the week. Pray for one another. And let's keep enduring, Israel. You know, let's be of that broken, contrite spirit daily. All right, Israel. Most High Christ. Bless y'all. Peace and blessings. Love you all. Stay strong, Israel. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings, Shira. Most High Christ, bless your home, sis. Um, last time I saw you and, uh, you know, your whole family, that was, when was that? September 2019. Out in the Bronx. I still remember that day. All praise to the Most High Christ. I pray that the Lord blessing y'all to continue to grow in the faith and, and, and be fruitful in the knowledge of the Most High and keep you safe, keep you healthy, and may the Lord continue to bless your household, sis. Yeah, I, I still remember that day that we that fellowship we had. That was that was an awesome day that day. So all praise to the most high in Christ. Tell my man Ruby, I said what's up. Peace and blessings. All right. So yeah, most high in Christ bless you. We doing good here in AZ. All praises, sis. All praises. Enduring just like y'all, ups and downs, but we still standing, you know, by the Lord's grace. All right, Israel. Most high Christ bless y'all. Peace and blessings.